Uh, all right, so we start again. Did we do it? This is it. Maybe it's yeah. over. It's a <laughs> great the podcast, intro. everybody. Oh, congratulations! Oh. <laughs> You're welcome. Season two will be coming out next week. Well, no. Why don't Why don't we actually start this thing? Why okay. don't we actually start this thing? Let's do it. Welcome, listeners and viewers. Um, those of you who are viewing. <laughs> Kind of weird. Yeah, it's kind of podcast. Weird. Why would you watch it? I mean, that's just where we're at now. We don't listen to podcasts anymore. We only watch them. <laughs> um, and I'm guilty as charged because I watch all my podcasts. So I guess I'm part of the problem. But anyway, this is the New Life Podcasts. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you say podcast? I did. I, no, no, no. No, I said podcasts. Oh, podcasts. Yes. Oh, podcasts. right. Okay. P O D cats, as in the animal. C A T S, as in. Yeah. Correct. That is correct. As I uh, I guess I'll As introduce myself. I'm Tyler. I'm the creative arts director here at New Life Church in Biddeford, Maine. Why don't you introduce yourself? I am Meg Sayer. Um, I do many different things. I wear many different hats. Uh, I do admin, some social media. I'm on the worship team. Mm. Yeah. And various other things. Yeah. What a great segue. My name's Ryan Sayer. <laughs> And Meg's my wife, or I'm actually Meg's husband, um, and I guess I'm just the the technical productions director here at New Life, which really means nothing. Uh, well, it's just a fake job they gave me to make me feel happy. For our purposes, it <laughs> means you spent the last hour getting this podcast ready to go. Yeah, I do tech stuff. I get all I, I put all the wires where they need to go, so mm-hmm. we can actually hear and see things. So is it I true? Guess it's kind of important. Is it true that you sometimes plug wires into the wrong places? So that you can then fix the problem. Yes, job security. Smart. I mean, it makes it so, yeah, I mean, like, I haven't needed to be here for, like, seven years. <laughs> so, like, every week I just do one little sabotage and be like, oh, you guys, yeah. this happened this week. Nothing happens. We don't ever have problems in our tech booth. Yeah, no. And, Mm-mm. yeah, so. <laughs> all the problems that we have in the tech booth are all by your design. Uh, yeah, it's right. a, it's, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For this segment, we're going to call it Things You Shouldn't Admit Ananias To. Ananias and Sapphira, <laughs> live. Uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. This little Bible gem. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, and you also are um, directly responsible for me getting a job here. Am I? I guess, maybe. You well, are. I don't know. Are we allowed to say that? You are, yeah. Because remember, workings? we met. We met. Before I worked here. Oh, yes. Yeah, you and I met. Um, the story of Tyler and I, season yep. one, actually mm-hmm. began, began more than just a year ago. Yeah, it began 20 years ago. Yeah, 2003, yeah. four-ish. Yep. Yep. And uh, we bumped into each other at a local show, yep. just a rock show, and you saw something in me. I did. Yeah. What, what was it, though? Can you remember? Um, well, you saw my ability... To um, to be handsome, you saw that in yeah. me, and you also knew that someday, someday, I would be a pretty good creative arts director. I was gonna be like, you know what, that guy should be the face of New Life. Oh, <laughs> that face right there. Yeah, <laughs> but your face has changed. Yeah, you it has changed. look. All, I like. I you'll every once in a while pop video uh, pictures of you and Laura, like yeah. from a long time ago, and I was like, who is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> the jawline, dude. It's just weird. That jawline, teenage Tyler, svelte. I mean, time has hit us all. It's true. Time um, has hit us there all. You go, yeah. For yeah. for some of us, myself included, it hasn't been super kind. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, also, I think you're more handsome now than you were before. Aww. You know what? Well, Actually, that helps you. My well, you're still wife, hideous. My wife. <laughs> Uh, Bart reference number one, but yeah. my wife, she, um, initially was hoping that I would someday look more like my dad. That's a true thing. I know your dad's handsome. Those he's, crawls. He's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. The crawls, man. They, yeah. got, they got good genes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, she was hoping that that would happen and guess what? It did. It did. No, it oh, did. did. Oh, it, oh, did. Oh, it did. That's what it's, I meant to say. Yeah. It's kind of out of control. So I guess she got exactly what she wanted. I want to, I just want to tell people a little bit about what the point of this podcast is. Uh, first of all, you guys did hear correctly. It is the New Life Podcasts, podcast. and you're probably wondering if this is a podcast about cats. And that's a fair question. <laughs> yeah. That is a fair question. Um, I'm going to say no. Uh, it's not actually a podcast about cats. They but, are our mascot, though. Yeah. And we <laughs> actually are 
the cats yeah. in question here. Yeah. Uh, cats being an acronym, it stands for kids. No, uh, no, that's all right. Come on. Try again. You got this. You can do this. Is it creative? It's creative. Oh, creative. Yes. Does Meg get to do the next part? Yeah, Meg. Arts. Yes. Team. That's us. Team. The creative <laughs> with an arts. S. Yes. Teams. So technically the T and the S, the S is really not there. We just think, add that. I think the S is only there because we consider ourselves cats. Because we are more than one. Yeah. Ooh. It's not the Trinity, though. <laughs> I know this there is, was like 14 people that thought that. so but, deep there. Yeah. yeah, this is the opposite problem of ATM machine. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. M and machine, that's redundant. <laughs> yeah. This is throwing in a letter that just doesn't need to be there at all. You know what's actually really awesome? You said that. And I, hopefully I'm not derailing everything, but that's okay. I'm, I bet you there are at least 17 people that just went automatic teller machine machine oh my gosh i'm an idiot <laughs> you're probably i've been right. saying that wrong yeah you're probably uh, right. i'm one of them it's also, also i guess i'll drop some knowledge yeah it's not i take it for granite because granite is a stone yes it's i take that for granted oh my goodness so there you go yes. you guys that's free wait that's free did you think it was granite no but no there Other are some people, people here that uh, that are really that are here that think that way and people that are here <laughs> yeah there's one in particular that people on no, our staff there's not, someone here not right now here not here not here yeah no no i i am assuming you mean there are people somewhere in this office wing yeah today <laughs> thursday they're here today the, what's the date today the ninth. The i'm about to go on a witch ninth. hunt i need to I know did. Yeah. Who thinks it's granite? Is it Steve? Well, yeah. You nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> you may not think it, but like he's posted a couple of times. He's like, don't take things for granite. And I'm like, oh, that's funny. That's, take them for marble. That is classic yeah. Pastor Steve. Take it from limestone. It's going to be that. this. Yep. I we love, love you. That. We love you, Pastor Steve. Sorry, of course Pastor we do. Steve. Really oh, wait. Uh, I meant a different Steve, not Pastor. Yeah, no, it's Pastor Steve. <laughs> uh oh. It's Pastor Steve. Oh, okay. This will probably get edited out. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, did I, I derail? What were you saying? I'm sorry. I was talking about um, automatic. Well, we were machine. just we were just we talking are. about we were just talking about the etymology of the name Ooh, of the yeah. podcast. Big word. Yeah, Everybody? I almost had to look that up. But go ahead. Go no, Google no, I'm that. good with it. That one I do know. Go Google that. Um, yeah. Anyway, this, so basically, we're we're giving you a small insight into what our weekly creative arts team meeting looks like, where the three of us sit around. Sometimes we bring in some special guests, depending on what the project is that we're trying to work sure. on. Yeah. We need some new perspectives or, you know, we're just too tired to think. And we'll bring in some people who are not too tired to think. Um, but yeah, usually it's the three of us and we're talking about like the creative direction, the visual identity of New Life Church, um, which is just a <laughs> fancy word for saying branding. Branding to me has always felt like kind of gross. I don't know why. What do you think about that? I'm okay yeah, with it. I just I mean, feel like it's one of those things where like, hey, we're going to do a revamp on what we look like. It's just, I think it's just a fancier, nicer way to say we're doing an overhaul because you look like you got baggy, baggy pleated khakis and we right. need to get you into some skinny <laughs> jeans. That's, I actually did that for a friend in high school. Which one? Um, his name was Caleb. Mm -hmm. And Caleb, there's no shot that you're listening to this, but if is you are. Is it Caleb Wanamaker? No, I don't, oh, okay. I don't know who oh, that is. Oh, that's not what I meant to say. Shoot. It's just. Anyway, go ahead. I wonder if we know this person. Let him tell the story. Yeah. No, there's no way you know. Rosenbauer. That. No. That's not, okay. Mm -hmm. Hopefully um, this Caleb was a friend of mine in high school. He was like a year behind me, I think. And he, Caleb was one of those dudes who wore like the the black T-shirts that said in like Comic Sans font, this is my black T-shirt, you know? Sure. Like, that was yeah. Caleb's general style, which had a moment. It had a moment. But by 2005, that moment had passed. Correct. Yeah, and I, I was like, Caleb, buddy, you can't be wearing that same shirt all the yeah. time. And he had, I think, maybe some birthday money or Christmas money or something. And he straight up asked me if I would take him, if I would take <laughs> him to the mall and help rebrand this dude. Yeah, and of course, that phrase didn't even exist in no, 2005. Yeah. But that glow up, didn't, it wasn't even glow up. There was back no then. such thing as what glowing was it up. Back then? Yeah. Um, an updo? I don't know, because that's kind of like the era of like, like, sh what is it? She's all that, like the movie. Where sure, sure. Yeah. You take like a nerdy. Kind the girl of next door and then, you, and yeah. then she gets all glammed and, up. Yeah. And then suddenly she's like beautiful. Next. But really, she was beautiful all along. Are you thing. saying all 1990 or early 2000 movies? At early 2000s. <laughs> she's uh, all that. MTV shows that I wasn't allowed oh, to watch. Yes. Yeah. 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 So anyway, yeah, I took him to Macy's. 
<laughs> Out of all the places with Macy's, course, to go yeah. like back then when it was like really good. Macy's uh, was cool. Pac yeah. was really nice. We back did in actually. 2000s. We went to Pac Sun. Yeah. Yep. Um, he did buy and then wear daily a fedora. Um, oh. On my advice, oh. Oh. it was 2005, man. You know, a fedora. In we were wearing fedoras in 2005. Fedoras yeah. and like bowler cap vests. Oh yeah, I wore a puffy vest. It was a even four screen like, puffy vest. Even oh yeah, like, yeah. Even yeah. like the like. No, I think she's like talking a vest. Tweed. vest. Sweater like vest? Tweed vest. No, no like, like a, a tweed vest. Like, or... Yeah, like a vest you would wear under a jacket, but Correct. like not under a jacket. Long sleeve tee. Yeah. Vest or on like top. in a short yeah. sleeve. Like Ricky. Well, it was like vest. a. It was. It was a. It was just a style. Yeah. It was hipster before we used yeah, the word hipster. Actually, that's right around the time hipster started coming out of the woodwork. Mm-hmm. I think I remember. One of my friends was like, oh, I dressed as a hipster this year for Halloween. I was like, what is a hipster? <laughs> I don't even understand what that is. You weren't even hip enough to know what yeah, a hipster was. he just had like a stupid mustache and like he was wearing like clothes from Goodwill mm. that we all got made fun of for wearing in 1992. Did he draw the mustache on his finger? No. So that he could do this thing? I've always thing? wanted to get a tattoo of that though. Oh my. I know it's stupid. Yeah. I might do it. <laughs> <laughs> but this one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do it on the, both the, fingers. The two then hands. You, yeah. Then you can have a what is that handlebar? Handlebar, uh, handlebar mustache, yeah. mustache. But I think that would hurt really bad. But we don't yeah. talk about tattoos because we might get kicked off on our second episode. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, no, I mean, we're uh, gonna push the boundaries on this podcast. Yeah, I like though. that. We're I like gonna that. push some boundaries for I like sure. That. I think another th- good thing that's probably gonna come out of this podcast. We're not just gonna sit around and shoot the breeze, but we're also probably gonna get into some real topics. It's possible. I don't want to like guarantee it, but it's possible that we'll discover that we don't all line up on some stuff and then we can have good conversation about it. And hopefully the listeners at home will be like, Oh, I haven't thought of that perspective before. Exactly. I, I think it's what they say. Iron sharpens iron. That is a thing that they say. Yeah. I believe the Bible is (laughs) the the thing that says it. Pretty sure it took, it took that quote from me, but I'm, but they can use it. Oh, did they? They might have. But, you know, I'm allowed, allowing them to use it. There's no copyright infringement. Unbelievable. But, no, I think that's a great thing. I think you and I had talked about something. We won't talk about it right now. But, like, you and I talked about something yesterday, I think. And we're, I think, on different ends. But the nice thing is, is and I think you're the one that said it. And I agree with it. You said, I'm against X, Y, Z. Yeah. But I'm willing to have a conversation about it. And I think if more people thought that way, it'd be good. Like, I was just talking to Tom. Uh, there's this pastor. And he, his whole thing on social media right now is, Starbucks is witchcraft. And... It's Ooh. the spirit of Lilith and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, hold on a second. The spirit of Lilith isn't a thing. The spirit of Jezebel <laughs> isn't a thing. It's just like what fancy Christian people try to use to sell merchandise. Sure. <laughs> but he did say something like, that's all ridiculous stuff. And I don't agree with that. But I still listen to some of the things because I want to hear what the other side of maybe some crazy Christians have to say. And, and I listened to another one that he had today. And he, it was right before he talked about... Um, Starbucks, he did say something about like, you should be able to come to my church as you are. Mm. But if in six months you haven't changed, that's on the pastor, he said. He's like, then I'm not maybe preaching what I should be preaching because if you come in here as a new Christian and you've got the world in you and all that stuff, within six months you should be surrounding yourself with people and you should be able to, let's say you're in, uh, I don't know what a good example would be, but let's say maybe you're addicted to drugs. We all can agree that that's bad. Sure. So maybe you come in here, you're a drug addict, and then six months later, you've got yourself in things. You're no longer addicted to drugs. Like, that should be the path that you're on. And I just thought that was actually really cool that he said that, even though I disagree with probably 98% of what else this guy's preaching, because he's saying that, don't go to Starbucks because they're a devil. It's like, oh, well, don't go to tar- uh, Tarbucks. Don't go to Target, because that's a devil, too. I mean, and there's all these places that we can well, go to. If, he, if he's against Starbucks, he most likely is also. Yeah. Against what, what is his problem with like, <laughs> like 40 year old women? One. Sure. Like, every that's Target all the has a Starbucks in it. So, yeah. <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? I, I mean, every Target has a Starbucks in it. So, that's true. Those things yeah. go hand in hand. But he, I think he was in the, in the video, he was talking about like, if I see a Starbucks cup in my church, I'm going to tell you to leave. And I was like, oh. I don't know if we have to go that that's crazy. Not... That's extreme. Yeah. yeah. But I also understand where he's coming from in some things. But like, again, it goes that's also to the. his conviction. Correct. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, and it's just an opinion because it's not biblical. So oh, that, hopefully that wasn't too saucy. Oh no, 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 that was good. I liked that. Oh, okay, cool. I'm gonna get that tattooed. <laughs> <laughs> um, you no, you actually made me think. Um, something that one one part of my job is on Sunday mornings I run 
our live stream because we started live streaming church back when COVID first kicked up. And then once COVID started to die down, we discovered that there was actually still a core audience Hmm. who was going to keep watching church at home on Sunday morning. So anyway, so that's a big part of my job is doing the church at home live stream. And I usually get on there five minutes before and just talk to everybody and check in and see how everybody's doing. And then immediately afterwards, we may have like five minutes where we, you know, if people are active in the chat, they may say like, this is a thing that stuck out to me in this sermon. If they're not active in the chat, (laughs) I will fill that time and talk about the things that stuck out to me (laughs) in the sermon. And we can get to that in a second. If you remember Justin's sermon from uh, this past Sunday, if there's anything that stuck out to you, I would love to hear about it. But before that, you just made me think about this, Ryan. Um, even though that guy, that pastor that you're talking about oh, yeah. has like maybe one side of the spectrum kind of extreme views, the point that he was making was if you're coming to church and you don't get changed from it, then the pastor is doing a bad job. Right. That's an interesting point, no matter what your views are, because that's what I tell everybody on Sunday mornings. I tell them like, hopefully you didn't come here this morning to hear a sermon that's going to reaffirm everything you already know yeah um hopefully you were trying to get challenged and you want to grow a little bit because if you don't get challenged you're not going to grow yeah absolutely. And you're just, you don't want somebody just telling you yes you're right and well, you're and smart the Bible and you're perfect is challenging and for sure i've had this conversation a lot lately um you know i think as christians a lot of times or at least in the modern church we are very afraid to like offend people which I mean, it shouldn't be our goal to like go out and offend people. Right. But at the same time, like the Bible says offenses will come. Mm -hmm. Right. So we know what's going to happen. We know, we know that God's word is pretty um, offensive to some people and um, can, can feel divisive to some people, but uh, like, it shouldn't be our, our, shouldn't be our goal to like try to protect everything because the truth is in there and, yeah, the truth should the truth, hurt sometimes. Yeah. Oh, for sure. It should make, like, I still hate Jacob in the Bible. Yeah. I was like, that dude, all he ever did was yeah. just go after things that wasn't really his, but he just did it anyway. And God's like, yeah, I'm going to honor you. It's like, what? Like, yeah. that is not how you're supposed to do things. Sorry, Jacob. Hopefully yeah. you're still up there. I don't know. But like, <laughs> <laughs> he got kicked out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, like, I, I just, like, there are some things in the Bible I really struggle with because I'm like, I don't like this and this seems out of character, but it's not. And there's lessons to learn. I just don't like them. But, but see, I, I think that that's learn. like all the more proof that this was not a man-made thing, right? Because if it were a man-made religion or whatever, like it would cater to our desires and what we want. Mm-hmm. And God does not cater to, to our desires. You know, mm-hmm. he of course wants us to have the desires of our heart if those things line up with his word. But, um, for sure. Like, Oh, easy. (laughs) Ryan's having like, (laughs) yeah, I almost just smashed my teeth in. If you're just listening and not watching, (laughs) Ryan tried to make some adjustments, um, with the audio and almost hit himself right in the face with that microphone, which is also something that hasn't happened since 2005. Grills. Let's leave that in 2005. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I think people are still doing that. They probably are, but I mean, I don't, you don't think they call them grills anymore. Do they call them a time or time piece is your watch? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of something piece. Mouthpiece. It's mouth not that. Piece. Yeah. A mouth guard? I have no idea. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, I'll also look that up. <laughs> Anybody yeah. in the comments, just, you know. Yeah. Are there going to be comments? I don't know. There could yeah, be comments. Be. I There's would love be, for yeah. there to be comments. Yeah. yeah. I would love to do a live one of these sometime. Oh, yeah. If we can get at least 12 viewers. Yeah. And then we could chat with yeah. them while we Honestly, do it. Honestly, oh, like, yeah, my, my hope for this podcast is that, <laughs> <laughs> um, that like, our, our community, anyone who's, like, listening, and particularly people that, I, I mean, I'm, my hope is for people that, like, attend New Life, whether online or in person, to like engage with us and and like comment. Tell us what you think. Tell tell us if you agree with something. Tell yeah. us if you disagree with something. Tell us if we have a booger hanging out of our nose. I don't know. I would <laughs> like, definitely like to know that. Please just. I would like to know if you hear you know, a booger in my nose. Like yeah. I want I want us to be able to connect with our community and for them to feel like they can connect with well, new think, life and 
yeah, I think that's good. I, th- I think isn't this podcast essentially kind of in lieu of doing social media posts because you were a big proponent in doing posts before, like sermon posts and everything like that, and the engagement wasn't soup wasn't really great for the amount of work going into things. It was it had become stagnant. Yeah, yeah. and I think yeah. so. I think this is more a more fresh way, and then hopefully people will disagree with us yeah. or agree. Not with that us. we will never have. I think not that we're like never ever going to do a sermon post but it was a lot of it was a lot of like time and blood sweat and tears and crying <laughs> and frustration of yeah oh gosh restarting computers like yeah. you would not believe um especially those weeks where Justin just didn't have anything good to say like, what do I do <laughs> no or the times where he's like got a million points and yeah. I'm like how do I sum up yeah this whole sermon in one post but I think the major thing is um you know, with, with sermon posts and stuff, uh, people like see it and they look at, and they might be like, Oh, cool. And then they just kind of scroll on by Mm -hmm. because it's not really the, the type of thing that you're generally going to like engage too much in. Right. You know, a lot of people I know on social media just really don't want to go like super in deep to like a conversation. So yeah, it was kind of like, Tyler, what do we do? (laughs) What do we do to get, our community involved in, in this kind of like discussion of what we do every week and yeah. what the pastors are, you know, preaching and why they're preaching what they're preaching and why do we believe this and why does, you know, what does the Bible say on this? But, um, which I think would be a good segue into what, um, we're hoping to do with, with podcasts in like, you may see just the three of us. You may see another guest come on that we talk with or, you know, that if that we ask questions of. Mm-hmm. Um, I just thought, I know we've already <laughs> talked about bits, but it'd be great if there's this like running joke that we always talk about. Trevor wants to be part yeah. of this. Like we should actually get like a cardboard cutout and get somebody in here that's not Tyler, but just like make a cutout where the lips are. I'm sorry. I do that all the time. He's looking at you all the time. Right. Sorry. We're so sorry Trevor, to Tyler Trevor. and Trevor. <laughs> okay. We anyway, still let, have let me go trouble. Back. So we get a cardboard cutout of Trevor. Yeah. And we cut yes. an open place. Pastor where mouth, Trevor. Pastor Trevor. Yeah. And for anyone who doesn't know, it's Pastor Trevor who is not here. Yeah. And Tyler who yes, is that's me. here. I'm Tyler. So yeah, Director Tyler. <laughs> <Yeah>. Dr. Tyler. <laughs> wait, did I say it wrong again? No. no oh, you're is good. that right? Oh, you're yeah. Good. Good. I was like, oh, wait. It doesn't compute in my brain. Yeah. Anyway, we have a cardboard cut out of him. We cut a mouth hole out mm. and we put somebody else's lips. That's not him. Yeah. So that way it seems like he's here. So he never gets to be here. Yep. But like we could always ask Trevor the I had to really think. <laughs> I'm really yeah, you. Stop and think yeah, about that it. was um, intentional and I appreciated yeah, and it. And ask the questions uh, like we could do ask a pastor. That's like the old um, the old Conan bit. Oh my gosh. Conan yes. used to do that with That's Arnold right. with, with Schwarzenegger. <laughs> That's right. And it would just be like super imposed just lips. The mouth. <laughs> it was, but it was just his mouth. That's my Arnold yeah. impression, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Nah, yeah. Good morning. Put the cookie down. I just saw the meme where it says, uh, "Come with me if you want to live, laugh, love." <laughs> but it's got like the it's got yeah. the "Let me see your manager haircut." Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Karen. Yeah, yeah. The Karen. Of yeah, course. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. Patented. Uh, uh, I derailed you did everything. Again. I told you. Time, literally I every again. time. This is what I live with, guys. Yeah. This is what I live with. And yeah. girls. I love him. That's yeah, not single out. When I say guys, I mean people. Yeah. Oh, right, all, right, right, yeah. Whatever. Gender shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yes. So anyway, yeah. uh, now we, uh, we've got a bunch of different ideas. We've got, we've got probably too many ideas. Um, for various segments that we can do on this, on this podcast. And I think what we can promise our, uh, many, many listeners is that every week they'll get two, three, maybe four segments of us, like breaking down some silly stuff, some life stuff, uh, talking about Sunday reflection stuff, takeaways from sermon or whatever. Um, and then getting to know the people of New Life better. I think that's the the general premise, right? Does that sound that's good? good? That's great. Yeah. So yeah. what we've just done, and I don't know when this is going to get posted, um, <laughs> hopefully right away, <laughs> hopefully <laughs> very soon so that it's not immediately dated. But in real time, we've just begun a brand new sermon series 
Um, I say we like I had anything to do with it. <laughs> Pastor Justin. We as the church. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Entered. We have entered <laughs> yes. a new sermon series. Pastor Justin is bringing us a new sermon series. Uh, it's called Bear Fruit. And the graphics are delicious. The graphics are delicious. Yeah. That I actually had something to do I'm with. I'm very impressed with it. I, I saw it and I didn't realize it till he said, uh, I guess I'll say what the graphic is literally yeah. just like this. Uh, it's like a piece of, it looks like a piece of paper that yeah. has like some, you know, not very many colors, but it's just a picture of a bear. There's yeah. literally no colors. Oh, yeah. there's no colors. Yes. It's, it's a bear, like a whitish background like a, with black. Yeah. A it's vine a bear of grapes. And like grapes. Like, yes. Yeah. So, like not a cluster, like a single grape. A cluster like of grapes. A cluster of grapes. Thank you. A bear? And thank you because I honestly did not. You couldn't think of cluster Understand, no, oh, that okay. it was bear fruit. Yeah. Because I sat there and I was like, why is it a bear and <laughs> grapes? I don't understand. Bear, because grapes, uh, bear, because grapes, initially he was talking grapes? about the leaves, right? He was talking about leaves like for a while. Yeah. And so I'm like, there's only a little bit of leaf on, on that right, yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where does the bear come in? I don't get it. So that was actually, that was Justin's inspiration. He gave me permission to be like just this much silly with the sermon like graphic for this week. He was like, don't take it too seriously. Please don't give me the cornucopia with all the fruit falling out of it because <laughs> yeah. it's called bare fruit. And I was like, well, that's, like that's fruit, very good. And one. yeah, like this is not a product placement. Yeah. No, we do not endorse McDonald's. <laughs> oh, gross. ASMR. ASMR. I don't know how the letters are. No, we're not. This is not an ASMR podcast. ASMR is what it is. Okay. I think I might have said AMSR. <laughs> yeah, I think that's like APR. That's ASM. ambulance medical services. Ah, uh, there you go. Correct. I'm just making that up. Oh know. shoot. Okay. Anyway, so I got a, I got to have a little bit of fun with that sermon graphic. So I appreciate that you enjoyed it. I did. Um, I thought it was really well done. You're gonna see it a lot because I'm assuming this bear fruit um, series that we're in is gonna stick around for a little while. Okay. So here's here's just a lingering and we're thought. back. And we're back. <laughs> we're going to take a quick commercial break. <laughs> Here's a lingering thought that I have from Sunday, and I would love to hear what you guys think about it. Just tell me how smart I am and, you know, how insightful. I'd really appreciate that. Yeah. So, Justin, it, of course, it's like the final thing that he talked about, so it's fresh on my brain. But he was telling the story of Jesus cursing the fig tree because it wasn't bearing fruit. And then what that led into in real time in, in the Bible story was him flipping all the tables over in the temple. And that story, I've heard it countless times, I'm sure, growing up in youth group and as a, as a Christian, I've heard it before. And I've also considered the metaphor before that, that Jesus is flipping the table um, in your life when you are putting too much focus on the stuff that is not part of the plan, that doesn't matter, that is not furthering the kingdom, that's not getting, you know, glory work done. So Jesus will flip that table in your life, and then you'll just be like, well, I guess I have to start over. But what Justin landed on that I really appreciated, and I guess I needed him to walk me through it, was when those tables are flipped over in your life, um, continue thinking about that Jesus doesn't flip those tables and then peace out and leave you there to clean up your own mess. Mm. He walks with you through the process of setting the table back up, clearing the place for it so that you can refocus and start doing that work that you need to be doing. I don't know. That was, that was a thought that lingered for me because I was always thinking of it as Jesus has flipped the table. I've been a bad boy. Yeah. End of metaphor. <laughs> I think I think the best part of of these things, like like the teachings, is not like the immediate message that it gives. Like he flips it over because you're in trouble. Right. No, it's always the secondary things that people forget. It's like yeah. the chosen. The cho I've only ever watched like maybe a couple episodes, but I love how it's not. This is what the Bible says. It's like right. these are like the behind the scenes things. Right. And like you said, like the first thing is there's sin in your life. Flip it over. But the best part about that. Is not that that got flipped over, but that he's there to help, uh, help you put those pieces back together the correct way, or you repent, you start fresh, you have a new table to do new things for God. Yeah, I think that's uh, those are as an adult now. I think of these things. It's like, oh yeah, maybe there's definitely more things because I feel like God's not stupid. Yeah, <laughs> like he's I, I can agree yeah, with that. Yeah. He's put yeah. all the <laughs> Easter eggs in the Bible that we could do, and that's why we can connect the dots on a bunch of things and everything that Jesus did had 
had and has meaning mm -hmm. from the past and to the future. And I think that's just really cool. Like, I'm glad that you got that out of that. And I actually didn't think about that part, I don't think, until you just said it. I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. That makes sense. And so it's always the secondary things that I think are really cool because you actually have to use your brain and be like, okay, hey, I got you with the baby stuff. And now the meat and potatoes are behind it. Right. right, right so right. I think that's that's cool. I'm glad you picked yeah. that out and shared that. Nice. I'll yeah, take man. my $5. That's, what, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Um, any other takeaways from Sunday? No. I Dead think why, why yeah, like why would we get why would we try to top that? I think that's the nugget that you want right there. That's that's a pretty good nugget. It's a, and um yeah, that's not from my wisdom, that's for sure. It's just it was nice to to hear, I don't know, just to hear the continuation of the thought. Because all I had ever heard was Jesus flipping those tables. Yeah. The continuation of the thought is him helping us set yeah. them back up for ourselves. And yep. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's good. good. That's good. I don't also, need... having a pastor is good. Having a pastor? Yeah. yeah. There's a deep thought for you. <laughs> yeah, Isn't it good. cool that... <laughs> That there are people who can help you make sense out of the Bible. I think yeah. that's I think that's rad. Yeah, <laughs> totally rad. Well, I mean, I'm thinking about like what you said earlier. If people like, if someone did not know a thing about Christianity, actually, it was you, Meg. Sorry, I don't know. I was to like, give oh, you what credit. did I say? It was you. Um, you kind of alluded to this, but if if someone picked up the Bible and did not know a thing about Christianity, and they just started reading through that thing, pretty good chance that they would be completely turned off from yeah. Christianity. There would be so much stuff in there that they would be like, oh, w this is not how we operate mm -hmm. in 2023. I'm not cool with it. But that's the beauty of having solid pastors in your life. You cannot do it on your own. You need to have people and who not, are in the yeah, Word not just, who can guide you. Not just pastors, but I mean... Let's be real, okay? Apostles, prophets, teachers. No, I mean, this. I think this is, like, a bigger discussion as to, like, why we even do church. It's mm. not about, like, going and listening to the pastor, right. right? Because we should be fed on our own at home. Yeah. Um, But coming together and, like, being with other Christians – in the midst of like whatever God is doing and speaking to us as a congregation is so good. But it also, each time we come together, you have an opportunity to like meet someone, have a conversation with someone. It puts you in a place where you have to, um, or, or maybe not always have to, but should be connecting with other people so that those people can be the people in your lives that also speak truth into you because, you know, you can read something in, in God's word. Mm -hmm. And I can read the same exact verse. We might get something a little bit different from that. Yep. Not to say that either one of them is um, right or wrong. I mean, that's not like up to us to, to judge, but you know, you might see something. I mean, I, I all the time, all the time with my mother-in-law, who's amazing. We'll read a scripture. That's actually and she'll, my mom. Yes. His yeah. mom. Nice. Um, well, she'll, she'll start reading like this verse and she'll just kind of stop like partway through. Oh, Oh, I never, I never <laughs> saw that before. I yeah. never got that. Like it just, something else will click in your, your mind. And mm -hmm. I think having conversations like this with other people who also believe and also are in their word can give you a fresh perspective. Of course we need a shepherd, you know, at which ultimately we have in Jesus, but we need like, you know, to corral the masses around here. We need our pastor. We need totally. someone who has spent time like in theology and yep. understanding the word, um, far better than most of us do, but we also have the Holy spirit that can reveal that to us. So yeah. Do, I, do bad pastors exist? Oh, for sure. Oh man, yeah. There's some pretty for bad pastors. For sure. How do yeah. you know? How do you Let's know? Let's name that... some. You ready? How do we know? I mean, <laughs> the news. Uh, that's I mean, all I'll say. Oh, forget the news. How about yeah. no? I mean, that's experience. how like we. That's how we know. But yeah, yeah. It really. Is, I'm mean, not going to speak to personal experience. Oh no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not here to. Name <laughs> I will. Names. All right, here we go. <laughs> no. Shots fired. Get your notebooks out, everybody. Yeah. Time to make a list. Uh, yeah. No bad pastors are out there. My favorite thing about bad pastors is when they come back mm. they're like hey i did this i was a real 
word I can't say on this podcast. Yeah. I abused my power, maybe. Yeah. Or I was just something dumb. I don't yeah. know what it was. You guys fill in the blanks there. But like when there's a comeback story where it's like, hey, I've legitimately sinned against my, you know, my God and my my flock. And uh, th- this is what I've done. And maybe I'm not looking for any representation anywhere, but like they're back and they become they get come back into the flock or whatever, or they're just another person that's in like our sanctuary. They're just like, Hey, I was a pastor, but I'm not anymore. I may have messed up on something and I'm here. What better place for them to be than, you know, back at church. And like, it kind of stinks for some people that maybe won't go back into like a position of, uh, I don't want to say power, but like a leadership role. Yeah. Like a leadership role. But when they, when a pastor messes up, repents and stays and becomes part of the body is like the best absolute story. I would, I want to hear those stories all the time. I mean, that's also like the story that most of us have of our own. We just weren't pastors of our own walks. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. You might not be a pastor, but I, you know, I want to be careful that like we don't put anyone on, on a pedestal. Cause sure. I mean, no one person's like greater than that's, another person, that's right. but I do realize that like pastors are, they're kind of in the spotlight more because well, yeah, 100%. I mean, literally every week they're up there in front of everyone. Yeah. But, um, you know, pastors struggle with the same things that like we struggle with. Yeah. And, but there's, you know, a story of like redemption for each one of us. So, but yeah. I think it is more, uh, visible. Like you Correct. say, when it's someone like a pastor or, or a worship leader or someone mm. like that, that like, because people see them more often, yeah, it can feel like it's a greater fall than like anyone else. But oh, right, yeah, because everybody has this thing like, oh, it's a pastor; he should know better. Like pastors, pastors are, are as susceptible as we are. Yeah, but like you said, they're in the spotlight, so uh, per se. So like when they're in there, it they, it is a harder yeah. fall because I mean, more people are looking yeah. to them than, and when, than me or you. Yeah, and when you are, I mean, when you're in that position, with, whether it's you know you're on on like online, you're the face or you're the pastor or you're the worship leader or whatever, you know, one of the other pastors or, or someone that's just more visible and something happens. Like, of course I do think in those positions, like you do have to be aware of like, not that there's a, 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 well, I mean a little bit of like a higher standard, you know, like you have to realize people are watching what you're doing and, watching, you know, how you handle situations and how you interact with people and stuff. So there's a greater measure of like, we, we all under, under God have to kind of live up to his expectations. Mm -hmm. Right. But like when you're in more of a visible position, you do have to kind of be a little more aware of like, okay, you know, if this, if people see something they might take it the wrong way or, you know what I mean? Just because yeah. it's more visible. Yeah. Um, to that point, I had an interesting moment. I don't know, maybe a month ago. Um, I was at the gas station with my daughter and we went in there just to, I don't know, grab some drinks or something. And we're standing in line waiting to check out. And um, the lady behind me, actually, she like tapped on my shoulder and she was like, church at home i was like oh hey and she introduced herself to me i didn't recognize her name because i don't think she's ever in the chat or whatever but then we had a nice conversation because she only watches church at home she doesn't come in person and we had a nice conversation it was really cool and that was a weird moment not because um not because i was uh recognized by someone i don't know for doing my job that was that was strange but what it made me think was like, huh, you, I mean, if she like didn't say anything to me, um, she's just observing how I'm behaving out in the wild. Yeah, And you wouldn't know because <laughs> yeah. you wouldn't have seen her and thought that person goes yeah. to my church. Oh my gosh, I need to be this, that, or the yeah. other. I need to behave myself or what something if, like. What if I'm like standing there crap talking, right. you know? my pastors what right if, what if i'm Even having like, a bad day yeah what I, if you'd just gotten in an argument with your daughter or, <laughs> or i'm whatever. like berating the cashier yeah. yeah what if i'm having a karen moment or something like that and i don't <laughs> none mean of this. us just give me my moments. cigarettes I, <laughs> I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding and i 
Okay, I want to make perfectly clear what I'm saying here. It's not that, oh, that would be so unfortunate if she saw Tyler from church at home behaving like an animal. It would be unfortunate if she saw someone who she knows is a Christian um, behaving like an animal. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know. There's, I feel like we should kind of all just be under the assumption. It's a good way to live. It's stressful, but be under the assumption that... People know you're a Christian. Yeah, so not even act like it. not even people that like like you say because you're on church at home or like where we are on the worship team or we have pastors that you know preach and so they're up there in front of, front of everyone. But like even if it's you know pe- there are people that we go to church with. I you know hate to say this, but like you you meet them for the first time and you're like, oh, how long have you been going to church? And they're like, oh, six years. You're like, oh. I didn't realize that. I'm sorry. Because, you know, because in a, in a larger church, sometimes that happens. Um, but there are a lot of people out there who are not like super connected, Mm -hmm. you know, they go to church and usually by design and, and, and they leave and they don't, you know, maybe don't, um, maybe they're just not as like visible and out there. Maybe they don't have like a super outgoing personality or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe they're just boring. No, but so oh. <laughs> no. I'm just saying like <laughs> even if you're you're going to church and you are, you know, interacting with people at church, like other people see you. Like each person that is in that church, you have, and Justin's talking about this, like a sphere of influence, right? Like you are a leader because no matter where you're going, you might go to Walmart or Target or Hannaford or whatever, and someone from church sees you, and maybe you don't see them mm-hmm. while you're there. Maybe you don't even know who this person is, but they see you. Like you are leading them in because if you're, you know, if you're having a Karen moment, like you said, you're <laughs> freaking out or you're whatever's going on, they're seeing that, and that is leading them either in a good direction or in a bad direction, or just plain giving them like a bad taste in their mouth about like Christianity or kind of even though um, our like our behaviors are not um, examples of God's behavior and God's love, we do represent him right so it kind of yeah you should be aware that like when you go out when you're interacting with people like and it shouldn't be well i need to be on my best behavior because i'm in public but like just be more aware of who you're representing yeah when you're out there totally so it's good for you too yeah yeah Although my mom so used to say, you don't get yourself in a bad situation. Yeah. Uh, my mom used to say, "Don't tell anyone who you belong to," because <laughs> I was embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> and if people found out that I belonged to her, they would—I don't know—judge her. I guess yeah, for, ostracize her probably from yeah, the church. Probably, dude. I yeah. will drop some 1995 religious nonsense on you. Yeah, let's but, do it. But Jesus is always with you, so He's always watching Absolutely. you. Absolutely. So I mean, there's a thought who that cares scared about me. the other people. That thought that scared me so much. Uh, I, I'll, I'll say, I'll say, in my youth group days. Um, but yeah, man, like I'm on the toilet. Here in the Jesus shower. is watching me. <laughs> yeah, it's creepy. Ooh, yeah, how would he do that? Yeah, maybe that's when he Stop, leaves. Maybe that's Jesus. when he doesn't look. <laughs> Until after, when he's you're like, like, look at this. And he's, he's like, like wow. I'll give you privacy for he's a moment. He's got a toilet filter on his omnipotence. <laughs> yeah, or omnipresence. Omnipresence. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of. 90s. Oh, oh, I thought we were going to go into a poop segment. Uh, okay. No. No, I although but you could get there. Yeah. Tyler had a good question. Yeah. What I is it? I don't know if you paid any attention to it, but I don't usually pay attention. So No, I mean, do you want to like yeah, let's introduce this? Ooh, here we go. I'm this excited. Next segment is called Thanks for the memories. Oh. Uh, you did say something about this. Yeah. Youth group memories? Fall out boy, please don't sue me. Embarrassing yeah. youth group yeah. memories. I I don't know about I'm you excited guys. for this one. I grew up in some form of youth group my whole life. My mom was my youth pastor. So I honestly, more of it is a blur to me than like solid memories because my entire life outside of school was at the church. It was at mm-hmm. youth group. So, you know, I've got one or two of those, but yep. I would love, I don't know your guys' youth group, y'all's youth group stories as well. So I would love to know what you got. You got an embarrassing youth group. I, I know do you, you have, have one. one. Uh, do I, do, I do, but no. What do you think the one that I would say is? 
I mean, I can. I Does can it have think to do of, with Blue Ray Mountain? No, I can think oh, of at least one about. for you. But <laughs> can you whisper it into the mic? Whisper it directly into the microphone. No one will hear. Like so, you can't hear me. No, no, so I can hear you because I don't know what you're doing. Everyone will hear you if you. No, whisper I was into the thinking. Mic. Get to know me. Oh no, that wasn't embarrassing. That was. Just I a think drama. that was embarrassing. That was a drama thing. You were. I have you one. Were... I have another one that's way more embarrassing. Okay, than let's that. hear it. Oh, do we? We're gonna do this one. Yeah. Is it me? Yeah. Me time. It's okay. you. Absolutely. It. All right, you Blueberry Mountain goers, this is for you because <laughs> this happened at Blueberry Mountain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that so we used to have youth group was separated into two different things. It was Jag. Which stood for what? Jesus Jag. activated generation. But I believe oh. at one point it was, it was grade six through nine. It was. It was Jag. But we can't say Jag 69 because <laughs> it of was. Bad. So so it, it was. Because it was six through ninth grade. Yeah, so and it was, it was like someone did not think that through. Think that one through. Actually, side note, our youth group name almost at one point was called XYZ. Extreme Youth Zone. Mm-hmm. Oh. Steve, and Pastor the, Steve, do not change the youth group name yeah. to that because it is a very dumb name. Yeah, and I apologize. In the '90s, so everything we, was extreme with an X. Yeah, well, and we <laughs> yeah. had to like come up with like cool names for everything. So yeah. it was oh, yeah, Jag, so it was and, Jag ground and Ground Zero. Yeah, this is pre 9/11, so yes. it was kind of nice. Um, so anyway, uh, we went up to Blueberry Mountain. I think for the first for the first week, I went up as a. I was in youth group still, but I think I went up as like a, a leader for uh, the Jag section of it so uh everything is separated into boys and girls obviously because you can't have them together and so i don't know how it showed up but um or how how it happened but i think we were all just like being super dumb and like jockish or whatever and we would do this thing called tea time where uh we would play pod's boom no it wasn't boom it was uh dun, 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 dun. Rock the party. Oh, rock yeah. the party. Yeah, it was rock the party. Love that. And uh, we would just mosh in our, our rooms and just be like dudes and just be Absolutely. stupid. And like there was like nobody wore deodorant. It was no. just, I mean, I'm trying to give you like the smell of vision. Did you ever version. pick up a broomstick and play it like a guitar? Oh, who didn't? Yeah, yeah absolutely. No. Yeah. yeah. One kid was... I think had a cast at one time and he yeah. smashed a couple of kids in the faces with it. it was... oh, anyway, gosh. that's not the embarrassing part. But yeah. for some reason we had, we called it tea time, testosterone time. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't tea understand time. tea time. Now I yeah. get it. So it's tea yeah. time. And uh, wait, did I already say tea time? You yes. did. You oh, did. I did. Oh, okay. Yeah, but now I understand where the tea comes from. Yeah, testosterone. Yeah. So um, so anyway, I think then it was like we were like, oh, yeah, we got all sweaty or whatever. So we go to take a shower. But like one of the kids, like we all had, everybody's clothes. Well, let's just say that. Okay. Yeah. So like one kid got into the shower. Then another kid got in as a joke. And we're like, oh, we should see how many people can get fit into the shower. Yes. And so like there's like six of us in this three all by three shower. All things that like never happen yeah. in the girls' bathroom. Yeah, never happens. Well, <laughs> okay. You guys are girls. Just, you guys yeah. don't even It just poop, doesn't so. happen. Anyway, yeah. uh, so we're in there, and like, we're all giggling, and we're laughing, and stuff like that, and so like I'm supposed to be like the youth leader person, but I'm kind of almost peers with them, mm. and all of a sudden, the door opens, and I'm like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, who else is coming in here? <laughs> and then everybody gets quiet, and you hear, click. Well, not click. He wasn't wearing high heels, but it was like a two. And then the screen opens where there's a changing area. Mm-hmm. And we're like, who's trying to come in here? And then all of a sudden, the what is it? The curtain. The curtain to the shower opens, and there's like six or seven dudes in a shower, and it's our youth pastor. Love that. And he's like, what the heck is happening? Yeah. <laughs> and it was just like, we don't know what to do. <laughs> yep, this looks not so great. And literally, we just all just ran <laughs> out of the shower. And nobody spoke of it ever again. Really? And I was still able to be a youth leader. But that was probably the most embarrassing thing. Because yeah. it's like, oh, I didn't think this through. Yep. This probably isn't a good idea. Yeah. But it made for a really good memory. The embarrassment was enough that... You guys punished yourselves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Not that there was really anything to punish, I guess. Nope. It's not like you guys were being bad. No, we were just like, it was like breaking Guinness, any rules. It was like Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah. Like how many dudes in a three by three shower? What you seven. Were, what you were doing. Maybe not at, seven. At worst was being very weird. Yeah, for sure. Um, but when you're a youth so pastor. So it was the embarrassment. Yeah. But when you're like a youth pastor who's like yeah. almost 40 and you see like a bunch of like teenagers. Yeah. You're like. Uh, why would you do this? The because I would not, not do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> out of context, that could have looked really bad. And for him, oh, actually, it was, it was out of context. Yes, yeah. yeah, so. <laughs> it's totally out of context for him. <laughs> he should have known with me being a youth leader. Yeah, that's so, fair. Thanks, Greg Roseberry. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna yeah. call you out on that one. Shout out, Greg. Shout out, Greg. Yep. Um, Meg, you got any weird youth group stories? Okay, so 
my stories all kind of come from like one event, mm. one time. And this wow. was also my this, first time ever. This is a core memory. This is. I, I think my, I know what this, this is. is. <laughs> well, there's, there's a lot. There's a yeah. lot to unpack here. First time ever, like coming to a youth group function. Honestly, I, I, it was not the first time ever going to a church event. I had been to a church event before, but I was raised like parents did not go to church. Um, someone. It was me. Someone <laughs> is Ryan Sayer. Who I met in high school. Yeah. Um, had invited me to a youth group lock in. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know what a lock in is, you still, stay up all night they lock you in yeah. you stay up all night you're playing games whatever and we did not go to sleep there was never any expectation and i had a huge that we crush were gonna go on to Meg. sleep and so I was we, like, you should totally he come had to a huge thing. crush on me i had a huge crush on him yeah, yeah. So he invited, invited me to the lock-in by the cute boy that yes, you have a crush and on, he obviously. invited me and i thought oh my gosh like he likes me i also had been very open to like yeah i'm cool like i i believe in god and yeah i want to know more more about this so i was like yeah cool and uh um, he didn't speak to me the whole night, oh, no. the whole night, <laughs> except for once where we were kind of passing in the hallway and he's just like, Hey, you having fun? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was not having fun. No, I didn't. And honestly, I didn't know really anyone that was in youth group because yeah. he was the only one in my grade that went to, to the church. Mm -hmm. At the time from high school. And there was like maybe one or two others who were younger than us that knew who I was. So they were like, just come hang out with us. But I did not know them. And later, to be, to later, be fair, I realized that, oh, no, this girl that I invited <laughs> oh, to church came. that I want to have as a girlfriend. Mm. If my mom finds out, he was, I am going to yes, die. He was. I, I will be dead forever. <laughs> and. I will not be able to have friends. So I remember telling Ken Cunningham, who come, hopefully you're listening Shout Ken. Shout out to Ken. Yeah. 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 Ken, thanks, buddy. I was able to tell him that Meg was my cousin. Oh. Yes. <laughs> to, sa to, cousin. to save himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I think I, I think that's so funny because like <laughs> he was, was he was not allowed to date or anything. And here he, I, I guess he didn't think it through like, oh, she, if what if she actually comes? So we're there. And this is my first ever intro to youth group mm. don't know any of these people and we're doing all these games and one of the games <laughs> had to do with like no i have to I forgot about those <laughs> so one of them is like the whole idea is that you know um like the, the straight and narrow right everyone used to always say straight and narrow. you got you okay oh yeah i'm good <laughs> do, you, do you want some caffeine? No, i'm good i'm good um the straight and narrow right so you're supposed to be able to like walk a straight line yeah well, you are blindfolded and people are hitting you with pillows. So incredible. It's called torture. It's called torture. Yes. You yeah. are, this is hazing. You're trying yeah. to still hazing. walk Thank that you. straight and narrow line while the world is hitting you with all these things. Right. So really I don't know lesson. any of these people. Yeah. I don't have any trust in these people, yep. but I'm just going to be trusting. Yep. And so I'm like, yes, my first ever time at youth group, I'm literally getting like beaten with pillows while blindfolded, folded. The second thing that happened, and these are all, maybe they weren't embarrassing to other people. To me, I was like mortified that this these things were happening to me. This next one is very embarrassing. Is this the one with the wall? Yes. So yeah, we're doing good. this thing where we've got this wooden wall and like everybody's assigned, you know, like you a might. Disability. You, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. well, some, some people didn't have a disability and then other people might be like, you have a broken arm. You have, you're a paraplegic, you're a quadriplegic, right? So. You have to get everyone over this wall. Mm -hmm. That's the whole. Safely. So everyone has to work together to get everyone over the wall. I mean, I would what think that the idea would be safely. Hold on. What were so, you? so we're in the what is now the student center. OK. Yeah. And there was carpeting, but it's like thin carpet and it is just cement underneath there. I get. OK. <laughs> The new girl who's never been here ever before gets assigned quadriplegic. Oh, so none of your limbs work. So right. none of my limbs Perfect. work. So yeah. I'm not allowed to use any of my limbs to get myself over the wall so that everybody else has to help. Yeah. So they hoist me up and I was much smaller back then than I am now. <laughs> um, 
they hoist me up over the wall and they just kind of tip me over. <laughs> Let me fall <laughs> onto and the Meg cement ground. Is a stickler for staying in character. I am, sure. Look, I am a stickler for yeah. roles yeah. and I was not going to catch myself, but nobody was there <laughs> to catch me. Oh, no. <laughs> and I just landed on the cement floor. And you came back. And I... It took me a year. Was that the first? That oh, was the first that was one? the first time. Did it time. really take you a year? Yeah, it took a year. Yeah, wow. well, because he. So I, again, for me, I was like, "Well, this cute boy that I liked in, invited me to come, and I then was, he didn't speak to me all night." Yeah, I was conflicted. So, there was two girls that I really liked, and I was very conflicted. And, uh, yeah, and also um, Jesus. Yeah, but well, I was like the yeah. I was like the harlot because I wasn't. That's I mean I wasn't, but like that's what I was. Outsider. That's what yeah. I was looked at. Like, oh, yeah. she, she doesn't go to church, whatever. Right. So. I was like, well, I guess he doesn't like me. He didn't speak to me all night long. And we were in classes together in high school and stuff. And I ended up with another boyfriend and we ended up like Ryan and I ended up hanging out. And it just kind of took the pressure off, like getting to know each other because, Mm -hmm. well, I have a boyfriend. So, um, so he invited me the next year by then. I didn't really have a long a a boyfriend anymore. What? To the lock in. To To another lock in. Exactly a year later. So he could make up for it. Yeah, totally. And he did. And this time I wasn't afraid of my mom or the other girl that I liked. Yeah. No. And I mean, literally the rest is history. Like we are now. We're bonded. Married. I mean, it's been 20. It's serious. I mean, we're, we're coming up on 25 years of that date. So like very shortly it was a new year's. Oh yeah. So that's crazy. Yeah. My goodness. I did give, I did give church another chance. (sighs) But and that youth stayed. group, man, that yeah. youth group. <laughs> yeah. Any other person might have been like, I'm never coming back. I, I just got beaten would. up on my yeah. <laughs> first time ever in church. That's straight out of a sitcom. I mean, that, <laughs> that yeah. feels like, I don't know. That, it's like an office episode. It does. It feels like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Michael, t- Michael tries a youth group. For I'm the telling first time. you, it is 100% <laughs> true. Wait, so do you have one too? <sighs> well, okay, so it's not a hyper specific memory but what i will say is we used to play these games so i'm a a little bit younger than you guys not a lot but a little bit younger than you guys and so my youth group days were like 2000 to 2005 that's like the real glory years for me and i remember in particular (laughs) one game that we played i don't know if you guys played it here but it was called baby if you love me (laughs) <laughs> are you never, familiar with the game? I would love to hear the rules of this game. No, okay. What? Well, I can't wait to get some feedback on this one. Yeah. Um, this segment brought to you by Youth Group Trauma. Um, <laughs> Baby, if you love me, was a game where you would circle all the teenagers, the teenagers, yeah, 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 in the gym or in the room or whatever, and we would all sit in a chair facing in, facing each other. And did you say in a circle? In a circle, okay, facing yeah. each other. One person would be in the middle of the circle. Their goal was to get a seat. And the only way they can get a seat, I kid you not, is by going up to anybody in the circle, sitting on their lap, and saying in whatever tone they choose, baby, if you love me, give me a smile. We're already... In violation of like the number one rule, which is the six inch rule. Six inch rule. In youth group. Big time. Yeah, there was like, no six inch rule. There is no in my room for the Holy Spirit I mean, in even, sitting on in someone's 2000 lap. In 2000 to 2005, how is that even allowed? <laughs> it was crazy, right? Okay. Yeah. Wow. Again, once again, my, What's mom, nomination was this my mom was the youth pastor. I want to make sure. I want to make sure that this does not go on dog. She's trying like, to my like poor hook you son. Up, I need to get him a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, dude. I think that's what she was. She was looking out for you. Wingman. I <laughs> really don't think that's what it was. She and I have talked about this already. So if she's listening, this will not come as any surprise to her, I don't think. Um, but it's just one of those things that every once in a while I remember we literally played a game where the teenagers in the youth group <laughs> were told to sit on each other's laps and seductively say to each other, baby, if you love me, give me a smile. And if the person smiled or broke in any way, you switch seats with them. And now it's their turn. There was no ending to this game. No. There was no way to collect points. Everybody it just wins. Went Keeps on. Keeps going until someone sh- shuts it down. Until, yeah, basically. Okay. Until, that's my mom, until my mom would come back from wherever she was, having just abandoned us to <laughs> be as gross as possible. Yeah. And of course, like, you know, there's multiple uh, strategies here. Like, I would go sit on, like, my best buddy's lap and get oh, yeah. real gross in his ear yeah, with it, yeah, of yeah. course. Or, 
the other strategy was to get kind of PG-13 with it. With the girl you like. Yeah. yeah. Or vice versa. Yeah. And that made me so uncomfortable mm-hmm. because, like you guys, I am uh, from the 1900s. Right. Um, and wow. I, I just felt yeah. really old for a uh-huh. second. I grew up in a Christian 1900s household. <laughs> Uh, so a girl sit, sitting on my lap and saying, baby, if you love me, give me a smile. I mean, was the literally the most uncomfortable I could we possibly We weren't be. even pretty much allowed to like sit next to one another. Yeah. Like we were, I mean, no joke. The six inch rule was like a huge thing yeah. that you would hear all the time. So yeah. I'm, there's no way that game would Crazy, ever right? have gone Crazy. here. I feel like I've missed out. I wonder if maybe in the comments could like anybody let us know if you've actually heard of this game or is this a yeah. weird crawl yes. game? Please tell me. Also, yes. <laughs> have you heard of Baby If You Love Me, Give Me a Smile? Yeah. Baby, it's cold outside. Also, I <laughs> would, I'm really interested like if you have, you guys out there mm-hmm. um, have an embarrassing youth group story. Yeah, let's hear them. Please submit. Please I think they should, share with us. Yes. Wait, do we have a place where people could DM us? Because let's not call out names though. Yeah, because that don't would be, call out a name. I would though. love to maybe do a segment where we bring some people in one by one. Yeah. And be like, here are the embarrassing characters. <laughs> you know what else we could do? <laughs> Actually, we could we can this this already exists. It won't be people that are listening to what Yeah, that's happening? crazy. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can hear this, but I'm that sorry, is a, but you probably can it hear is it. It's a crazy <laughs> amount of noise right behind us. Yeah. We but this is on us we're they're, trying to record they're doing, a podcast. Yeah, they're doing some construction stuff and um, yeah. and we didn't want to help, so we, we are also podcast <laughs> doing the podcast <laughs> oh, sorry, right we're now. Oh, busy you guys. <laughs> well, we are. Uh but yeah, I guess the payback is that they are going to be as loud as possible. Yeah. They just um, want to be part of this. Here's what we can do. <laughs> they always want to be a part. We can go have, are you familiar with reddit.com? Yes. Yeah. That's the well, spot. The, I was going to say, go okay, so that's what I was thinking. Like, even if you, Those are out there. even if you guys want to like submit them and we read them, I would love to do that. Yeah. That'd be so really good. on the next episode, we're going to read, um, no we real can, names. We'll keep it anonymous. We'll keep it anonymous, but we're going to read off some embarrassing you. I would memories. love that. Oh my gosh. I want to hear them. So let's, let's please, hear yours. Please, I mean, guys. we just gave you ours. All right. So let's, and let's build some probably. trust here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's Wait, more. more and there's more. Wait, so do we have? We don't have a Reddit for church. No. Or wait, or so there's this other thing that people use, and I can't remember what it's called. I'm thinking of Dylan because he uses it. Discord. Yes. Like I wonder if maybe a Discord, if we should have a. Ca- or just send them Discord. to Tyler dot Crowell at newlifemain <laughs> dot yeah, org. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Go to nlc dot today, and you can find us on there. Send it to any one of us. Honestly, um, we'll take them. Yeah. We would love to hear your embarrassing. Are our emails on memory. there? Our emails yeah. are on there. Yeah. yeah. yeah so whoever you feel comfortable with. Yep. Um, well, anyway, <laughs> I think I think we pretty much did the dang thing, especially because it is getting so loud on it this is, end of the yeah. It is getting we really. We should probably wrap it up. All right. I think we did it. Yeah. Do we, we high five it. at the end of every episode? I think we should high five yeah, at the okay. end of every episode. Let's wait, wait, wait. Before we high five. Yeah. Okay. High 15. No, no, no. Oh, yes. Yeah. Before yeah, we 15. high 15. Um <laughs> Let me just say, those of you who have made it this far into the podcast, oh. we appreciate you. We do. We, we love you. Um, thank you for giving this a test run. It's only going to get better from here. I can Let's assure hope. you of that. <laughs> and know. also, here's something that you can do that would really help us out. Make sure you actually subscribe to the podcast. And I cannot believe I'm saying these words out loud. I can't but wait to hear Rate it. and review it, okay? Oh, wow. If you give this podcast five stars, it actually helps our visibility so more people will find out about it. So definitely do that. Make sure you subscribe wherever it is that you're listening. Like and rate, subscribe. Rate and review. Smash that rate and review <laughs> yeah. button. And if you give us a one star, stop listening. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Well, give, us, give us that one star. Actually, so that, I, yeah, I encourage yeah. Any, any amount of stars. So that we can good. grow. Yeah. <laughs> one star is better than no stars. Are we ready to high five? Yeah. Yeah, let's high five. Let's do it. Okay. Can we get the microphone close? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so that they can hear it. All the microphones. Cats, Cats. assemble. <laughs> it was, it's like pretty bad. I think my, we broke my Meg's fingers. Hand just got <laughs> that couldn't have got any any better. Uh, I hope every week is worse and worse. Yep. All right. All right. That's it. All right. It's a wrap. Good job, guys. Wrap. We did it. <laughs>